today on Gardening with Creekside, we are excited to share with you that we have our first arrival of plants for 2023. We got a great uh, delivery of our perennials from our friends at Walters Gardens just yesterday. So you can see behind me that they arrived on this lovely pallet and boxes. So what I really want to do today is just show you how plants arrive to us as a grower retailer. So we are Creekside Nursery in Dallas, North Carolina, zone 7B. We are just west of Charlotte, um, right above the South Carolina state line to give you a little bit of perspective of where we are. We are a grower retailer, so that what does that mean? It means that we grow our plants and then sell them directly to our customers. We are a Proven Winners Destination Garden Center. We work very closely with them. We have fantastic relationship, not only with Proven Winners, but the nurseries that are a part of Proven Winners. One of those is Walters Gardens. Walters Gardens is in Michigan, and it is the grower of all of their perennials. So if you have a Proven Winners perennial, it came from Walters Gardens. They come to us as different plants, right? They come to us in different ways. So that is what I wanted to share with you. Like, you know, uh, a beautiful blueberry Sunday Baptisia just doesn't magically appear at the garden center. How does it get there? So that is what we're going to show you today. And for my folks, maybe that you are a somebody that's just now starting out you know with your own nursery that you want to start a garden center or maybe you just want to become a grower so i want to share with you how we have done it for years and soon it is going to change a little bit because the potting machine that we have been so anxiously awaiting is going to be arriving soon so what we have here we are in production number one up at the uh, production area of the greenhouse maybe you, i don't know if you can see but the lights are in now of course we have this beautiful concrete floor that we put in earlier this year emily is busy doing those blueberry sunday baptisia baptisia come to us as a bare root so that is one way that your perennials can come to you also um, as a grower, so this is how it comes to us, but maybe you're, you know, a home gardener and you're going to be ordering plants, you know, online. Make sure that you know how they're going to be arriving to you. Some come as bare root, some come as potted. So just make sure when you're ordering, you know how they're going to arrive. So this is a bare root Baptisia and you can see it literally is only just the roots. We love Walters because they grow fabulous stock. Really, really nice root system. This is considered a grade one. That's a size. That means it's nice and large. And if you see some, you know, some little white stuff in there, that's sawdust to keep the moisture off of the roots. So Baptisia, to give you an idea, these three stems right here this is what was above the ground last year this was last year's growth and it got cut down now all these little eyes down here this is what would be happening underneath the soil so if you have your baptisia in the ground this is what it looks like underground when we plant it when emily is planting it she wants it to be just right there last year's growth where she can see where it was cut is just going to be sticking right above the soil but all these eyes are going to be underneath it can be a little problematic sometimes because these roots are so healthy and vigorous so you kind of have to wrestle we love baptisia in fact emily just said i love baptisia it's a gorgeous plant it's fantastic but trying to plant it sometimes can be a little booger boo because you kind of have to wrestle it some so plants can come to you as bare root so there we go and we have got a ton of different baptisia so we've got the blueberry sunday we have let me go through here and give you an idea we have the oh my word i can't even find them pink lemonade pink lemonade we have honey roasted which is a different variety um, from Walters. And it's interesting, so if you can see this palette, if it is a white box, then it is a proven winner's plant. If it is a brown box, then that is a Walters Gardens plant. So we've got those there. Um, we've got all sorts of just gorgeous, I can't even find them all because they're all kind of buried in here right now. So 
Bare root is one way that it can come to you for sure. Another way is that it's gonna come as a little a plug, a liner. And this is an example of that. So if you've watched this before and you've seen this when we get our annuals, this is similar in the fact. So this is Fall in Love Sweetly. It is a Japanese anemone. It is one of my absolute favorite plants. It's one of my top 15 favorite plants for the South. Really nice, easy perennial that um, gives you great fall color and interest. It does these beautiful, sweet little uh, double pink blooms on it. But these guys obviously look very different than your bare root. It already has soil in there. You can see the roots growing out of it. So what Emily will do with these is we'll take it and then plant it directly into the soil, into the um, pots. Goes a little bit faster because you can just move and groove with these guys. The downside, if you wanna look at it that way, is that they obviously are smaller, but they grow super fast. The Baptisia are going in two gallon containers because they get huge, their root systems are big, but most of our perennials are gonna go in what we call a premium one gallon, which is just a really nice, nice, good size one gallon container. Um, these do not have to be planted immediately. What we were looking at first is getting all the bare roots planted because obviously we need to get them in the soil where they can get moisture and food. These guys, if we don't get them planted today, not a problem. They can sit in here in the greenhouse, unbox, they get in sunlight on them. When they get a little dry, give them a good drink of water and they can be here um, for a couple of days, a week, two weeks, you know, if you have to. So these are a little bit more forgiving as far as the timeline of when you have to get them planted. So what we'll do is just line up these trays and as they're ready for them, you just pull them. So let me talk about a little bit of the process of how we like actually pot up some things. So Jerry and I and our kids have basically planted plants in any kind of condition, weather condition you want to talk about. Hot, sweaty, you know, in the full sun, we've done that. We've done it in the cold, wet rain when it's sleeting, been there, done that. So we are kind of moving up in the world that we're in an enclosed area. But we have used these trailers so many times. They are extremely versatile because basically it's a rolling large table that we can just move it wherever we want. What we have always done in the past, and this is what's gonna change for us when we get this potting machine, is I think back here in the back, you can see where Jerry brought in a pallet of soil. So we bring that in, and then this is the, oh gosh, what is it? This is the 52. So it's the um, 52, the F52, soil mixture. It has, um, has bark in it, it has good, all the good, um, components to it where it will hold the moisture but it's not going to be soupy wet and it will still drain really nice but the bags are heavy so what he does is he has to pick them up throw them on the table slice them open and then dump them so that's why we have this nice big pile of soil that emily can pull from so she grabs her container puts some soil on the bottom of it puts the bare root in and then goes from there and fills it up so if you're a, you know, a grower and you're just now getting started, don't think you have to be super fancy and like super automated. You don't, right? So just start with the basics. That has what, what we have used for years and years and years. And we're finally at a point where we just can't physically keep up with that. And we're just trying to think smarter, right? Work smarter, not harder. And our business is at to a point where we can get that soil machine. So the soil machine will actually have the soil in there we'll put all the soil in the container and then we just come back in and put the plugs now with the baptisia however we'll still have to do this by hand just because the roots are just so um, enormous so once she has all of the blueberry sundae done i think there's 25 in this container in this box she will take these pots and then she will just start lining them up nice and neat and organized up against the wall. We will keep them in here um, until we absolutely have to move them out when this is needed for annuals. We will first start with the other greenhouses putting the annuals in there. So this is the last one really to be filled with annuals. That way it gives these plants time 
to get their roots growing, get established, and then when we need this, then we will move them outside. And hopefully by that point, we'll be past like our worst weather. If we need to cover them with a frost protection blanket to keep them a little warm, if we have a really cold spell, we can certainly do that for sure. But um, lots of fun things. So let's go through really quick. If you don't mind, let's talk about some fun plants that are on this shipment. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of a unboxing here right quick because there's some there's a lot of, of great plants. So we did some of the Baptisia, we did this so sweetly. This is the Heaven Scent. And if you have a shade garden, especially in the South, um, Heaven Scent, now you may look at that right now and you're like, oh my goodness, that is just a sad looking little plant. Well, this is how it comes to us and the, we're the grower, right? So it's our job to grow this out to be a beautiful plant for you that will be ready in late spring, early summer. Heaven Scent is a beautiful, almost has like a fern-like foliage to it with beautiful blue flowers on it. For us in the South, you definitely need to have it in the shade. If you're, it's very cold tolerant though. So if you're in colder zones, it does say on the tag that it can be sun to shade. So the colder you are, the more sun you can get. The hotter you are, definitely put this in shade. I have it in deep, deep shade and it did fabulous for me last year. So the Heaven Scent is a wonderful one. I'm pretty sure in this brown box, I think I know what this is. Oh, oh, let me borrow that for a second or open me up. Um, this is, yes, that is Ming Treasure. And Ming Treasure is a rare introduction from Walters. It is a beautiful iris. And so you're like, oh, well, what's so special about it? This thing can get ginormous. When we were at Walters this summer, they had some mature plants in their display gardens and I took a picture beside of one. It was taller than me, massive, gorgeous, deep purple blooms on it, really unique. It loves to have some nice moisture. So if you've got kind of a wet area, it will do fantastic. So Ming Treasure, that's a really fun one. And you can see here that even though this is a, a plug, a liner, how much of a different size this is compared to like that so sweetly. So your plugs will come in different sizes and they talk about it, they'll say, you know, it's a 28 or, or whatever. That's how many plants fit in a tray. So you could have a 72, you could have a 25, there's all just different sizes. So the smaller the number, the larger the plant because that means there's fewer plants in a tray and they're bigger size. So. That gives you an idea on that. Really popular, one of our most popular is actually is a perennial, are the Buried Treasure Strawberries from Proven Winners. These are such fantastic plants. Now again, you may look at that and go, well, that's kind of sad and pitiful. Yes, we're getting ready to do our magic on it and get these babies growing so that they are full and lush for you. But the Buried Treasure is a fantastic strawberry. It comes in white, pink, and red. The only difference is, is the flower color is different. The strawberries are the exact same. But these are ever-bearing strawberries. So they will produce edible strawberries that you can eat throughout the growing season. You can put them in containers, you can put them directly in your garden, like in the landscape. Um, had some people put them in hanging baskets because as they grow, like other strawberries, they'll kind of do those runners that kind of, you know, go over. So it would be really nice in a hanging basket. But as your plants mature from year to year, your berries get bigger and you get more of them. But this is a really fun plant, especially if you have kids and you kind of want to get them interested into gardening. Plants, where does food come from? This is a great plant to start with because it's beautiful. You can just mingle it in with your regular flowers. You could put it in, you know, you could have this next to a petunia or this next to a salvia, right? Um, gorgeous plant really gets the kids interested because they want to go out and check every day. Does it have a strawberry? Does it have a strawberry? Um, we have these throughout the gardens. And so that's kind of how I, uh, I bring the kids in. I'm like, Hey, you want a fresh strawberry? And they love to go pick strawberries with Miss Jenny. 
pink a blue pulmonaria. Now this is another fun shade perennial for you folks. I know sometimes the shade gardeners seem like they get a little bit of the raw end of the deal. Pink a blue is really fun. Pulmonaria is such a great shade loving perennial gorgeous color on it but pink and blue is different from um, spot on in that it has true pink flowers and then they will change to a blue spot on is a little bit more salmon colored you can absolutely intermingle these in your garden i love both of them i have personally found that pink and blue seems to grow a little faster and is a little bit more vigorous so for me personally, that's a good thing. It's not at all like invasive or anything. It's just that your plant bulks up faster. So pink and blue is a great one for you shade gardeners. And I know that I am not going to like specific. I'm not telling you zones. I'm not telling you, you know, full sizes. We're literally unboxing. I just want to introduce these plants to you. So if you have a question about it, you can go to provenwinners.com. You can go to waltersgardens.com, look up the plant. It will tell you everything you've ever wanted to know and tons and tons of pictures. This is not an in-depth plant expo on these. This is just like, hey, look what's coming and gonna be at Creekside Nursery. So that's why um, kind of the goal here that I am sharing with you. One of my favorite um, ground covers is Ajuga. Ajuga, this is black scallop Ajuga. Um, it is a very low growing perennial that is for us in 7b it is a evergreen so i have these in the garden they're actually between my flagstones at my steps really nice when it gets full sun it is black there's a little bit of green in here obviously they've been in a box they've been traveling so they've kind of greened up a little bit but they'll do little spikes of blue flowers really fun ajuga can do sun or shade evergreen short ground cover fantastic it does spread. I have not found that it's an invasive spreader in my garden. It naturalizes quite nicely, but I, for me, would not say that it is invasive. Love black scallop ajuga. It is a glorious plant for sure. And Jerry's got a bare root for me. Lavender bubbles allium. <gasps> Ooh, allium, right? So allium, lack of a better word, you know, wild onions. So the alliums, all onions are in that allium family. So this is lavender bubbles. This is a Walters Gardens um, exclusive. They bred this plant. So this is an example, another example of a bare root. See, look at all that massive root system. And then you can see where they have trimmed it, right? So what we will do is when we plant this, everything here will be under the ground and this will be like right, right at soil level. But the lavender bubbles, the nice, huge purple flowers. If you want to attract the pollinators to your garden, alliums are the absolute, one of the best things to have in your garden. Nice, tall, and if I remember, the lavender bubbles has a wider blade on it. So it looks like a grass or onions, but it's a nice wide blade, gorgeous, tall, purple blooms and when i say tall i'm not talking about like the globe master alliums i'm just talking about you know that 12 foot i mean 12 foot ha! now that'd be an allium 12 inches tall right um but they are deer resistant like even just holding this i can smell the onions so not deer proof deer resistant so if you're looking for that full sun alliums lavender bubbles is a great one. Oh, lol. oh the firefly achillea now Imagine getting this in the mail and you're like, oh my goodness, what do I do with that thing? It's kind of hard to figure out what is a root and what is, <laughs> what is the plant. This plant, I was so impressed with this last year. Put it out in the backyard beds. Um, it was neglected. It was, you know, had some irrigation issues. So it would get water, not get water. Gorgeous, continuous bloomer of beautiful yellow flowers. Um, love this plant. It is gorgeous and just really hardy. It was pretty much an evergreen for me until that seven degree night, the Arctic storm that came through. It's still green, but just not as green. So firefly, achillea, oh, love this plant. It is an amazing one. And then we have Amsonia in here too, Jerry. Yeah, that's this one right here. This one is String Theory. 
String Theory Amsonia. Now this is another one that Emily loves to plant because it is, um, look at the root system on that. So if you're not familiar with Amsonia, it is a beautiful early spring bloomer, beautiful true blue flowers on it. String Theory is has really fun, unique foliage, kind of a, a grassy fern-like appearance to it. But you get this in the ground, like this all this goes in and then, then again like much like the baptisia this is last year's growth where it has been cut and then you can see the eyes here so the eyes need to be under the ground with the last year's growth just kind of poking up above the soil um storm cloud and then storm cloud y'all look at this it is as big as my head massive massive this again is why we love ordering from walter's gardens because they are huge massive root system when we tell our customers if a perennial and a shrub you are buying the root stock right you are buying this system if you were to take this i mean i guess technically maybe i'll probably wouldn't do it right now but you could take this and put it in your in the ground directly in the ground not the best way to do it but just imagine putting this in the ground. Can you imagine the plant that's gonna come from this? It is going to be huge. It is gonna be gorgeous. It is going to bloom that first season for you. Just gorgeous, gorgeous storm cloud. And storm cloud comes out like a black, like a really dark color, turns to green, and then of course it has that beautiful flowers. What else we got? Yeah, I, mean, I don't want to go too crazy because we start yes. to open it up and it, lets then it, it dry, start to dry out. Yes. So when we have the bare roots, they are in plastic bags and we don't want to open up every, like those because we don't want the roots to dry out. So we do have to be a little bit careful. That's pretty much all the plugs, liners. Yes. And Empress Blue right there. Oh, Empress Blue. In that hosta that they come dormant right oh. there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we also, of course, get lots of beautiful hostas from um walters i'm going to show you just pull this out so this is empress Wu, and empress Wu is um a stunning hosta and i'm going to try to get one out here for you if i can she's stuck oh the root systems are so here we go and they um they like to get friendly with their neighbor so the roots had gone over here we go. I got it. All right. So this is a hosta. And you're like, Jenny, that does not look like a hosta. Well, it is. Look at that beautiful root system. We can, we can just go ahead and pull that out just a little bit. We can tease it open so that way when it gets into the pot, then that will start, um, see how these guys are kind of coming out? Then they will start growing um, nice and fast. We don't want to go in there and just go to town breaking them up like crazy. They will naturally spread out so they are fine. But the eye is down in there um, without trying to make too much of a hot mess right there. Um, but this is the eye right here. So that's where the, the hosta is. When we pot these up, they will be completely under the soil. So we want all of this buried underneath the soil, and then they will come and flush out as the temperatures go up and as their roots start to grow and develop. But just to give you a little heads up on some things that are happening here at Creekside, here we are uh, really or the second week in January, I guess. Next week, we have our first round of Proven Winter Annuals that will be arriving. Very exciting. Fingers crossed that the uh, soil machine will be here and up and running <laughs> for those annuals and even probably some of these uh, perennials. And um, yes, yeah, so all of these trays that are off to this side, those are for all of the annuals. Now that is not the only trays that we will be, like that's not our whole inventory, that's just a start. Uh, so we will have, both production houses will be literally wall to wall in annuals, and then the retail garden center will be jam packed with annuals as well. So the growing season for Creekside Nursery is um, off and running. We will keep potting up plants, whether it is perennials, annuals, or shrubs, basically from now all the way through even the fall. So it is a continuous process, so that way we can have good plants um, available for you every time that we are open. 
we have to constantly be bringing plants in that we can start growing and getting ready for all of you sweet folks. So that's an update from here at Creekside Nursery. As always, thanks so much for gardening with Creekside. Of course, we will keep you updated on how everybody's doing with our nursery tours. Um, so just stay tuned. Lots of fun things happening here. As always, we appreciate you. Have a great day. See you in the next video. Bye, friends.